my name is Ty. I'm an account executive here at Level Set. It's my job to start those conversations that change the way our customers collect payment. My favorite part of my job is getting into my customer's world, learning about their goals and challenges, and helping them make small chain process changes for big impact. So what we're going to talk about today is using LevelSet's LeanWrite management platform as part of a collection strategy that leverages LeanWrites to help expedite payment and reduce days outstanding. In a nutshell, what we find is that a consistent payment process gets consistent payment results. There are three major components to an effective collections-oriented lean right management process, making sure your jobs are noticed, even if you're not legally obligated to do so, automation, which is keeping administrative effort to a minimum, escalation, and follow-through, so always having the correct next step. But first, as promised, a bit about us. Level set exists to help contractors and suppliers get paid, protect their lien rights, and avoid potential payment problems in order to grow and thrive in the construction industry. The construction industry presents some unique challenges when it comes to getting paid. To solve those challenges, we provide free resources like payment profiles, educational lien law guides, and other payment solutions. We also have a full product suite of software, including cloud-based lien rights management software, tools to help you evaluate your risk on jobs, and we'll even help you finance your materials. That one's kind of new, but it's going really well. So stop on by for some cash. I do want to remind you again about the Q&A box. Please use it. Use it a whole bunch. It gives us something to talk about and makes it really relevant to you. So please be liberal with those. Um, today's agenda will cover knowing who you're working with before you enter into an agreement with them, ways to identify payment risk on your jobs as they progress, documents you can send to protect your lien rights and get paid faster. And of course, we've saved some time for the much hyped Q&A. Habit number one, know who you're doing business with. The first step to the process is to pre-qualify hiring parties you intend to work with using something like level sets risk reports. Maybe you're considering working with a new contractor and you have no idea what their payment history is or how many disputes they've been involved in. You can utilize risk reports to give you a snapshot type of report card on new companies you're looking to potentially do business with. That'll show you things like if they've had payment issues in the last 90 days, a job disputes index, which reveals what percentage of recent jobs have had issues, their payment speed showing how many days on average it takes the company in question to pay their subs, and an overall payment risk score, giving you the ability to review a company's payment history quickly and accurately. It's essentially a construction specific report card so you can build relationships with new contractors and feel confident that you will get paid in full and on time. So this is giving you just kind of a rough overview, little screenshots of, of how that's gonna look. And the goal is to make it really user-friendly so you can at a glance understand whether this is somebody you wanna do business with. Maybe it's somebody that you wanna do business with but change your terms for a little bit. Um, so that gives you kind of a, a good idea of what type of relationships they have had in the past and how you're likely to be treated. So once you've decided to work with a contractor based on the information provided in your risk report and you sent out the correct preliminary notices through the level set platform, we now wanna make sure that you have that same level of visibility throughout the project and can address any payment issues as they arise. JobRadar Premium is that tool that provides you with valuable alerts that help you monitor the flow of payment on your job. You'll see things like payment issues for other subcontractors and potential payment delays, lien alerts letting you know if somebody else has already filed a lien on that project, or if a company on your project, say your owner who has all the money, has filed for bankruptcy. And for those of you in states with notices of completion requirements that are gonna change your lien deadlines, you'll get notices for that as well. So, you know, in California in particular, we're going from our standard 90 day deadline to a 30 day deadline. And you may or may not get that notice of completion on a reasonable timeline. So that can be really, really helpful. The information that JobRadar Premium provides will let you know what's happening on your project in real time. So you can focus your collections efforts on making sure your payment is secure. Maybe you're like some of my customers who don't typically send out prelims to GCs who they've worked with in the past. Job Radar Premium is a great way to make sure that you're keeping tabs on those jobs without negatively imp impacting those, those relationships because we know how important relationships are in construction. They're you know pretty much everything. 
maybe, well, I like to think of Job Radar Premium as keeping a bird's eye view on projects you're on. Consider it insider info that isn't available to everyone. So taking all of those infos that you would normally get through something like the grapevine, but we're giving you actual data. So it's not just whatever your friend Jimmy told you. Last week, I spoke to a new customer who was very interested to know if a lien had been filed on a job they were about to start supplying materials for. There happened to be a lien on that project, so they decided to go with cash on delivery rather than their usual net 30 terms. They still chose to take the job. They just mitigated their risk of non-payment based on real data rather than a handshake or a gut feeling. Habit number two, make yourself visible in the payment chain. Depending on what state you're working in, there are some documents that might need to go out at the start of a job to preserve lien rights. That's right, way before a payment problem has even arisen, you might have to send a lien related document in order to have your rights later on. You can automate these documents within level set so that you know you're always protecting your lien rights should you need to leverage them later. Generally, the first document to go out is something like a prelim. These can vary from state to state and can have all kinds of different names associated, such as notice of furnishing or notice to owner or pre, they all do pretty much the same thing, announcing that you're on the job and expect to get paid. After that, a simple payment reminder can be delivered. It's something that you would send out after the job is complete as a friendly reminder that you're ready to get paid, but you're still leveraging those lien rights just in a little bit more of a casual way than kind of like escalating to, you know, threats of lien. Um, it's easy to ignore a friendly reminder, but the word lean seems to help everyone find their checkbook really fast. Habit number three, exercise your payment rights with notices and liens. There are a few documents you can send either manually or automatically within level set to further escalate when you're not getting paid on the, on the job. A notice of intent to lean is a formal notice that you send to your customer and the project stakeholders, so everybody above you in the payment chain who has your money, um, to escalate that demand. It functions as the final demand letter or the shot across the bow to give folks a chance to avoid legal action. Most of the time, three, three, these three steps of creating the transparency, um, formally or informally reminding, and then escalating to notice of intent to lean are enough to get folks paid without actually having to take that legal step. Again, creating that consistent payment process. Additionally, what we find is that leveraging rights early and often is a good way to be first in line if a project does go south, such as in the case of bankruptcy. To be clear, you can file a lien with level set. I just want to make that really clear. We aren't in the business of selling liens, but if all else fails, if you do need to follow through on this process, we want you to be able to do so. We know that legal paperwork can be time consuming, of course, both as a subcontractor and as a hiring party up chain. For subs, your best friend is going to be automating documents to achieve that consistent payment process without a ton of administrative labor. For hiring parties, Level Set will help you collect and organize your lien waivers all in one place so you're never having to wait to cut a check because somebody downstream doesn't have their paperwork in order, and you're never having to write a check without having those rights waived. Okay, so I don't see any questions. I would really love for you to throw some questions in. I'm sure you have them. What's going on for you? Tell me. Tell me all the deets. While I wait for that, I have a handy dandy customer story I'd love to share with you today. Dry Patrol of Central Ohio is a restoration company. They reduced their DSO from 90 days to 17 days with automating their process in that three-step process that we've been discussing today. They prelim all their projects to let the folks know that you know we have lien rights and we intend to protect them. And then they send a notice of intent to lien when the project is overdue. And then they always file a lien if they don't get paid. So they're not like trusting the handshake um, or trusting the insurance company because we know that can get really complicated really quick. Earlier, we talked about why you should prelim every job, even if you don't legally have to, like in Ohio. And here's why. Preliminary notices put everyone in this, on the same page, literally page because it's a document, to provide transparency on who's providing work and that they expect to get paid. So the scope of their work, who's hired them, all of those relevant details, letting folks know who's on their job, who's on their site for security, which can be really helpful. So it's helpful to you to, uh, of course, announce yourself, but it's also helpful to your hiring parties to let them know what's up and let them know what they're going to be dealing with. Um, we're also 
uh, we're also going to help you keep track of your deadlines so that that consistent payment process is there and we can help you nudge you toward forward closure as well, which would be the next step in the lien process after the legal filing. We're also going to begin the process for automated functions to keep you rolling with the consistent collections process. And it makes you look really awesome if you start a job and you get a fancy letterhead in the mail that says, here we are. Um, okay, one last little horn toot action here. What webinar would be complete if we didn't share some of our feedback? We very much value and appreciate customer feedback and we build our service needs around the industry. So we've uh, gotten some feedback recently. Some of my favorite feedback in our WOW channel was um, that a longtime customer was really happy with the direction that we've been going for them. So not only were we relevant to them four years ago when they started working with us, but we've actually changed our processes to suit them better as they've grown and changed, which I think is really an, an awesome compliment. I'm really proud of that. Okay, questions, it's time, comments. Slander, what would you think about this? Do you have any reactions to what this might be like to receive uh, a prelim in the mail or a notice of intent? Tell me, tell me all of your things. Uh, here, I've got a quick one. Will a contractor know that I've run a risk report or I'm using job radar? The answer is no. These job radar alerts or these inquiries are not going to show up like in their credit report or something. This is just, again, very similar to how you would see through the, through the grapevine because all of this is public knowledge. So bankruptcy liens in particular um, is all going to be part of public record. So anybody can access that. So that's a great question. Hey, Ty, an, mm -hmm. we have a customer question that just came in. Um, they are not familiar with the process. Um, so do I see one. It. You got it? Yeah, I see it. Awesome. Um, we say, I'm not familiar with the process. Do you have to send a preliminary notice? Is it a definite start and end date required? Also, what happens if the job goes past the end date? That's a great question. So what we need generally, well, let me kind of, this is a kind of multi-parter. Do you have to send a preliminary notice? In some places, yes. So places like top of mind, I've got California, Arizona, Florida. In order to have lien rights at the end of the project, there is a document that has some legalese. So there's some stuff on there that's state mandated that has to be included. So the answer to that is sometimes um, our favorite answer in our legal department is it depends. So it really depends on where you're at. And it also can depend on your role on the job. So in California, if I'm a prime contractor, if there's a lender on the project, I have to send a prelim. And so there's all of these little if this, then that kind of nuances. And we've got tons of additional resources for your estate on our website as well. Um, is a definite start and end date required? So the start date is really important. So since California is my example, they call it a 20 day notice. So as soon as your boots land on the project, either you've supplied the materials or you've started supplying labor, what have you, that's when that project is gonna start and you've got a little bit of a cushion. So about a 20 day window to get that document out in order to preserve lien rights for later. Um, also, what happens if the job goes past the end date? So we're not super concerned with the end date um, as much as the actual real time end date. So if I end on January 30th, and I literally leave the job on January 30th, that's when the countdown starts ticking for my lien deadline. And as a side note, that lien deadline varies dramatically from state to state as well. And also, as I kind of alluded to earlier, can vary what type of document is sent by the GC. So if a GC sends a notice of completion on the job, then my deadline changes in California. So there's, there's a lot of these kind of if this, then that nuances there. Um, if that didn't answer your answer your question, please toss another one in there. I'm happy to, to elaborate on that. Um, what if we have a contractor that isn't listed in the database? Is there any way to check them out? The answer is yes. So we've got a team whose whole situation is to, to build this product and to make it really awesome for you. So if we've got a handy dandy risk report already built for whoever you're working with, then great. Uh, we'll be happy to just share that with you right away. If that's something that we need to generate, typically is a, a couple day turnaround. So we can we can create new ones as well. Here's another one that I bet is top of mind for a lot of other folks as well. How much does this service cost? So this really depends. So um, we know that there's a lot of different need between company to company. So if I'm a GC and I need to have a waiver solution, my in experience and my need for level set is going to be really different than if I'm a roofer doing, you know, 500 jobs a year. 
So how it works to get the pricing is first we make an evaluation. So you scan the QR code that I'm about to send you, then you and I get together and kind of talk through some of your goals. And we figure out, okay, does level set really apply to me? Does this make sense for my business? And then we build a plan together based on things like your job volume and your feature need and your typical uh, uh, location in the, in the payment chain, that kind of stuff. So, you know, the short answer is stop on by to figure out because I, I don't really have like a, a price list or anything. Thanks for the questions. Look at us go. Okay, I've got another one here. What type of information does job radar show that would matter most to me? I didn't address that one, did I? I don't think so. So again, this is gonna kind of depend. So things like bankruptcy would be coming down from the owners. So if you're, if you're a project owner or if your GC company or somebody else above you has filed for bankruptcy, that's going to make a dramatic difference on your steps that you should take. So, you know, it can get really messy. Um, typically, folks would get advice to file a lien as quickly as they can so you can get first in line. Um, other things like uh, the payment rhythms for other contractors. So say I'm a drywall contractor and I find out that somebody after me on the job, like the flooring folks have already gotten paid, but I'm still waiting. I'm gonna wanna figure what's going on here. So either like I'm any day now or I need to start escalating and start kind of figuring out who has my money and kind of focus my attention. So it can really vary. Um, yeah, I hope that answers that one too. Um, how will I know what documents to send in each of the states I'm working with? That's a great question. So we've talked a lot about the kind of weird state to state nuances and uh, location or the uh, role nuances that can come up. And when you're when we're talking about level set and this is, you know, what we do. All, everything that is going to be compliant within your job tracking. So our subscription customers will have access to um, the deadline tracking features of our website, which is going to automatically fill in from based on my start date, my location and who hired me, all of those weird nuances will be kind of filled in those blanks and we'll provide you with the correct and compliant documentation that's up to date. Um, I want to make it really clear that from our subscription side, this isn't a system that's like running away from you. It's not like we're going to start leaning all of your friends, right? Like that's not what we're here to do. We know that your relationships are precious and are really the backbone of your businesses and that we, we that really matters to us as well. And um, well, thanks for the plug, Kiana. We've also got some state specific webinars coming up. So stop on by for that, especially my Texans. My goodness, we have quite the scenario here. For, uh, for our lien rights in Texas. But um, yeah, just wanna make it clear that you are in control of, of what documents get sent out. So of course we have, we'll let you know what's uh, required for your state in order to preserve your lien rights. And then we've also got some best practices or collections methods that we know work and we suggest that you take advantage of and, and utilize for your business as well. But I'm not gonna start sending payment escalations when you know that you know this person is gonna, gonna get a windfall from their aunt in a couple of days. So like you don't need to necessarily escalate on day 31 on, day, on 30 day terms kind of thing. Um, so, so yeah, you're in control of as much or as little automation as you like and streamlining as much of that administrative effort as we can because um, that's really for us is like, how can we get our administrators laser focused on the collections efforts that really need their attention so that you're not spending your time standing in line at the post office anymore like that just isn't isn't probably as good a use as your time as it could be. Okay, any questions that I missed? This can't be it, this can't be it. <laughs> Don't you wanna know a little more about Texas and how complicated and confusing is as confusing it is? Well, I'll just, uh, reveal a little bit of our QR code here, kind of a plug for a further conversation. Um, so for us, everything's really done on a person to person, typically on the phone kind of a situation because we know how nuanced each of your businesses are. We know that 
you know, as I mentioned earlier, a GC and a roofing contractor are just not the same business and you have completely different needs. So, you know, if I'm a subcontractor versus a prime, if I'm working in Texas versus California, these are really big differences. And I want to understand if level set applies to you, I want to understand how I can help. So stop on by, um, give us a zap and we're myself or any of my, any of my suitably jacketed colleagues will be happy to have that conversation with you and help you make that evaluation, build you the correct pricing and um, start changing the way that you run your collections process. Thanks, Alita. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. I'm glad that you are able to utilize a lot of the, a lot of the steps that we talked through here. Um, this three-step process can be a pretty, pretty big game changer. No questions about filing liens. What are your payment problems? Everyone has a payment problem that you're still working on collecting. Give it to me straight. Oh, good. Tell Mary Beth about Texas. I'd love to. I have nine whole minutes to fill here, Mary Beth. Thanks for the backup. Okay, so Texas is a little bit weird. And I kind of like, with every single call I do, I'll pull up the rules. So I'm gonna have my rules down here below. But essentially there's not a preliminary notice requirement in Texas, but instead of the prelim requirement, you're gonna see what's called a Texas monthly notice. So for most folks in Texas, I'm sure you're familiar with the 15th of the month, how there's like a mad dash to get these documents out. And it's kind of like an adversarial document that has to go out in order to preserve lien rights per invoice. So everywhere else it's per project, but here in Texas it's per invoice. So you'll see like if I do work in January and I still haven't been paid on March or paid in March, and it's uh, based on if it's residential versus commercial, the calculation's a little bit different. But I think this one's what I'm using now as an example for commercial. On the third month that work has been performed and unpaid, I'll have to send a Texas monthly notice. If I still worked in February and I still haven't been paid by March, April, then I have to send two Texas monthly notices. So it, it really is, it's a beast. It's a beast of a thing to understand. And it's this, uh, the 15th day of the third month or fourth month following the work performed or unpaid. But if it was just a one-off, then that starts the lien deadline, which is a little bit different for, cal or for uh, commercial versus residential. So, you know, that's like super high level of what makes Texas complicated, but good news is they did remove the uh, notarization requirement, which is a big sigh of relief for a lot of us here at Level Set because that was a big pain in the hiney. Um, do you find sending a follow-up email after discussing late payments is effective? Um, so that's a great question. And a lot of the folks that, so most of the folks that I chat with, yeah, more than 50% of the folks that I chat with are coming to us because they have some kind of problem that they're trying to sort out. So they're like, hey, I've worked this job and I still haven't gotten paid. What do I do? Um, and I'll say, well, what have you tried so far? And they'll say, well, I call an email. So that's certainly part of a really good solution. The problem is that if there aren't any teeth behind something like a follow-up email, like say a lean shaped teeth where they know that you actually have some leverage to do something to get paid, it can feel a little bit, um, it can kind of like go into the dark abyss. And these folks are really savvy. Hiring parties can be really savvy. And so sometimes they'll know, and you know, hopefully this isn't happening, but sometimes it definitely does. They know exactly when you ended work and what your lean deadlines are. So if they could say your check is in the mail for like three or four or five weeks, and now we're starting to bump up against our 60, 90, 45 day lean deadline. So that moment arrives where that, that you're not able to file a lien any longer. They know that they can pay you at their leisure. Um, so it's not that emails are a bad thing. It's just that um, making sure that they're backed by like a genuine leverage and a genuine next step that is going to have some teeth to it is a really essential part of it. And the other thing is that when we're talking about any kind of volume of jobs or any kind of like, you know, if I'm working two or three new jobs a week and I'm dealing with invoicing every other week and, you know, all of this other administrative effort, the calling and emailing turns into a massive time suck and being ignored with the calling and emailing turns into an emotional suck as well. So um, that's kind of, that's our take on it is that the emailing is great. And like, why would you, do all the emailing if you could just let us do it for you and make it easier because that's certainly part of our process as well. Mary Beth, did that address your Texas question? Because um, I know it's, I, 
I read it out loud to myself at least a couple times a day and I'm still like, what is this? Why is this like this? Awesome, happy to hear it. Um, and Eileen, I hope that it answered your follow-up email question as well, because that's super, super common. And, you know, you're operating in good faith, right? You're not, you're expecting to get paid because you perform the work as agreed to and you performed it satisfactorily. And, you know, you shouldn't have to be a dang paralegal to get paid. Awesome, I'm glad. All right. Well, unless there are any other questions, y'all know where the chat box is. I hope that you'll give us a zap. Um, I would love to kind of understand what's going on on this little QR code here. I'm gesturing with my mouse. I don't know if you can see it, but um, I hope that you'll swing on by, make an evaluation for yourself and kind of determine, maybe I'm ready to have a little bit of time back in my day toward um, other things like HR and all these other hats that y'all wear out there, out there in chat land. So thanks a lot for your time today. We'll cut it just a tiny bit early and uh, we'll see you next time, hopefully for a little more state specific webinar action. Mm -hmm.